You can try and do things without God's process. You can try and take shortcuts, it's true. But at a time when you most need those things, they will disappoint you, they will leave you. Greetings in Jesus' name. Yes, the Lord be with your spirit. Thank you for joining me for this divine lecture once again. All about the process of God. Let's open our Bible first to the book of Psalm. Psalm 1. This is a great and precious promise that God has given us. Psalm 1 from verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. You see, I'm surrounded by trees. They go through their different seasons. How many years do you think they've been here? Do you ever think about that? What a picture of life God has set before us in his word. We read that promise and all of us say, yes, I want to be like that tree who is planted deep by the water and produces fruit and whatever he does prospers. But how many times do we look at our life and we realize that we actually pluck the fruit from the tree instead of producing it ourselves? What do I mean by this? What's your favorite fruit? I like mango. And if you eat mango, you could get it instantly if you buy it in a shop. Or if you live in certain parts of the world, you can pluck it from a tree and you can eat it in its season. But do you know when a mango tree is first planted, it can take up to eight years before the first fruit appears. If you want to build something that will last, if you want to plant something that will produce fruit, it's not possible without process. You see, patience, endurance, perseverance are all the language of God. But Satan's time is always now. What do I mean? You see, Satan's product, it doesn't require any process because Satan steals. Yes, he violates our conscience. He, he comes to our mind and, and fires our brain with different lusts that demand to be satisfied now, now, now. Hmm. But what's Jesus' product? Jesus' product is life. Anything that is alive has a process. And that process cannot be ignored. That process cannot be withdrawn. That process cannot be removed because it's part and parcel of God's creation. You see, the Bible tells us in the book of John 14, verse 27, that Jesus gives us peace, not as the world gives. That means that the world can give you peace. I mean, Satan can give you peace, but his product of peace is not genuine. Yes, he imitates, he copies, he steals. His product of peace is never genuine. That means that it doesn't require any process to obtain it. And it doesn't require any process to leave you enslaved to his devices, worse off than you were before. Are you believing the lie of Satan, the father of lies, that anything good can be obtained without process, without time, without effort? Why do we resist process in our lives? Why do we find it so difficult to wait for God's time? Let's talk about patience. You cannot talk about patience first without the promise of God. God's faith cannot be real without his promise. The Bible is full of promises. Yes, let's go to that book of 2 Peter, where we read about the promise that God has given us. 2 Peter from verse 4, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, 
Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if all these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does this mean to you? This means that God has set before us great and precious promises. They're in his word. We are partakers of these promises as children of blessing, children of Abraham, children of the divine promise, children of God. And yet, between you and the fulfillment of that promise, there's a bridge. And that bridge is faith coupled with patience. You can't ignore patience. You can't dodge patience when it comes to God's promises. Because God has to take you through a process so that you can be where you are and who you are to manage the blessing of God for your life. Hmm. Remember, everything natural goes through a process. Everything. Who starts building something without looking at the tools they need to build? So why do we face life's journey without the tools that we need to get through? And what are those tools? Patience, perseverance, endurance, faith. These are the tools of a man and a woman of faith. But today, they're little celebrated. Today, we want everything quick, 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 fast, fast, fast. We have believed Satan's lie that you can get what you want all the time. Have you ever thought about what your life would look like if you actually got what you want all the time? No, seriously, think about it a minute. Think about what your life would look like, what you would look like inside and out if everything that you wanted was always gratified. Hmm. Because that's the lie that Satan is feeding you, is feeding me, is feeding us. That's the lie that's destroying this generation. If you got what you wanted all the time, we would actually be like adult babies, completely unable to take any responsible decision based on our principles. Nothing good comes without discipline, but discipline is not easy. But that is what creates the process of God in your life. I want to tell you something today that process is more valuable than the result you're looking for. The working of your heart, the working of God in your heart is that process. That process needs to be gone through. If you don't go through that process, you can't manage the blessing of God for your life. The minute you realize that that process is part of life, and that process is, is even more valuable than result, your whole way of thinking will change. And where is the process we're talking about? The process is in our heart, because our heart is the workshop of God. And our heart is where the Word of God enters at the point of revelation. The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to bring peace to our heart, to bring joy to our heart, to give us strength to face every situation. Yes, the Word of God is what you need for the process of God. Why is process so important to God? Because he wants you and I to know what it takes to be a producer, not just a consumer. And to be a producer is not overnight. To be a producer is not just instantly. Jesus' product is life. He wants us to know what it takes to produce life, to produce things that are in line with God's processing. <laughs> Satan's product requires no process because he steals, he imitates, he takes what is genuine and makes it fake to make us think that that is what we need. Don't be deceived by Satan's lie. We need the process of God in our lives. That is what we need. That is what we need to become who God wants us to be. Yes, who God wants us to be. In the mind of God, there's nothing like failure. In the mind of God, there's nothing like fear. In the mind of God, there's nothing like pain. Are you ready to be who God has created you to be? You are a work of art. Ask the producer what it takes to produce life. Ask the potter what it takes. And he will tell you the value of the process. Because you have to be melted, remolded and filled before you can be used for God's glory. This is the vessel that God wants to use. God has no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet but our feet. He has no mouth but our mouth to tell people how he died, how he loves us. 
That is why God is interested in process. That is why God is a God of process. Look at Abraham, look at Moses, look at Joseph. All of them, it was not until they left the comfort of their home, the warm arms of their family, the comfort of their country, and stepped out in the direction of God's calling for their life. It was not until that happened that they finally started going through the process to receive that divine call in their life. How many years did Joseph spend before he received that dream of greatness and its fulfillment? He went through so many difficulties, so many trials before that, that dream came to pass. But all of that was necessary in order for him to learn the necessary lessons in life in order to manage that blessing when it finally came. What process are you in right now? What stage of the process are you in? Are you being melted? Are you being remolded? Don't give up. Value that process because it's that process that is making us like Jesus more and more in our heart every day. I want to take you to the book of 1 Corinthians. Let's see as Christians, what is our aim? It's all about our motive. What is our aim? Let's read from verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Do you hear that? Being saved. What does that mean? That means that there's a process. Yes, there's a process. We are on our way to being saved. What does this mean? This means that every day, increasingly we become more like Christ if we continue to obey the word of God in the midst of our heart. The Holy Spirit comes into our heart with the aim of creating a godly character. These are the virtues that we read about earlier. Patience, faith, godliness. All these things are in, in us to become more like Jesus. And that is what Jesus wants you to have in your life so that you can manage the great blessing that he has for you. There's nothing worse than receiving something and losing it because you don't know how to manage it. If you don't know how to manage your good times, they will soon turn to hard times. So wait, because in the waiting, God is working. In the waiting, God is working in your heart and that is what we find so difficult to understand. The process that we're talking about is not on the outside, the process is on the inside. You might not see any difference, but yes, there is a difference. Each day, hour by hour, we become increasingly like Christ if we obey the word of God and allow the word to enter our heart at the point of revelation. This word of God has transforming power. I want to encourage you today. A few weeks ago, I turned 40 and I want to encourage you that I'm so excited to be at this stage of my life. And I look back and can see the power of God's process in my life. Even if I look at our baby daughter, I can see the power of process. Nine months in the womb for her to be fully formed and now she's been outside of the womb longer than she was inside. And each moment, the process of growth of development is taking place. If process is such a part of life, why do we resist it? Why do we fight against it? What a blessing to live a life arranged by God. The temptation today we face is the fight with our senses. Because Satan uses our senses to tempt us, to tell us that we deserve, that everything we want should be instantly gratified now. That is why he steals. Anything he gives you with his right hand, with his left hand, he takes from you what your life depends on. That means that, yes, you can try and do things without God's process. You can try and take shortcuts, it's true. But at a time when you most need those things, they will disappoint you, they will leave you. That is what will happen if you do things without the process of God. It's our processing that either works for us or against us. In wanting to achieve something, how we achieve it, the process we take to achieve it, can work against us or can work for us. Think about sitting for an exam. Instead of studying, you could pay someone to sit it for you. You could cheat and you could get first class. You could get, come out with fine, flying colors, but the process of what you have done will work against you. It can never work for you. That is the principle of life. If the process of your marriage is in line with God, nothing can separate you. 
if the process of your life is in line with God, whatever happens, whatever comes, it will be to make you stronger. It will be to make you stronger in your faith. What's the processing of your life? Please, I want to encourage you today. Do not give up. Do not lose heart because God is with you, working in the process of your heart. If you feel like the process of your life is wrong, it's never too late. It's never too late to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and submit to his process. Because do you know that the greatest gift you have is that of choice? Hmm. Satan wants you to operate out of mere instinct. But the greatest gift you have is that of choice. You can choose to walk away from wrong opportunities. You can choose to say no to Satan's temptation, to Satan's lie. You can choose to submit your life to the process of God. And when you choose to do that, you will see the glory of God. Let's learn a lesson from Abraham. The Bible says he patiently waited for the fulfillment of God's promise in his life. Patience, perseverance, endurance. Do you know that patience is the power that forces deception to reveal itself? God has a purpose for every stage of your life, for every season of your life. But so many of us, we've changed the history of our life because we cannot see beyond our immediate situation. And the greatest mistakes happen because of impatience. Yes, impatience is costly. How many mistakes have happened in your life because of impatience? I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister, my mother, my father, my daughter, my son. I want to encourage you. The process of your life is so important to God. If you understand that, you will see that no second is wasted. Because as you move through your life, are you growing in love? Are you growing in patience? Are you growing in faith? You can be growing in maturity, you can be growing in stature, you can be growing in wisdom, but are you growing in patience? You see, patience is the power that forces deception to reveal itself. <laughs> yes, you can pretend to be good, you can pretend to be kind, but you can never ever pretend to be patient. No, it is patience coupled with faith that will help you inherit the promises of God. Because the promises of God are true, are yes and amen. God has a wonderful plan for you. You are a work of art. Don't ever doubt that you're the greatest product of the Holy Spirit. But you have to go through a process. <laughs> if you're tempted to give up, if you're tempted to go back and walk away from God, if you're tempted to turn your back on God and walk away from his process, you're missing out on the great blessing that God has for you. Look at our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's the greatest example. Even though he was the son of God, he honored process. He knew that there's time for sowing and time for reaping the harvest. The Bible says in Hebrews 5 verse 8 that even though he was the son of God, he learned obedience by what he suffered. That means that everything that he went through in the process of his time here on earth, he learned what God wanted him to learn. He spent 33 years on this earth. 30 of them were preparatory. In just three years, he changed the entire world. What an example to us of patience. What an example to us of endurance. What an example to us of submission to God's will and God's timing. Yes, just look in that book of John 7, verse 6, when they wanted to force him to come up to the feast and he said, hmm, my time has not yet come. Which time controls you? Is it God's time or is it human time? Because for human time, any time can be right. But God has a time and purpose for everything that has to do with you. Do you believe that? If you believe that God's time is real, if I look back at my life, I can tell you right now that God's time is real. Before I used to just think it was something, a concept, maybe I read about, but now I can tell you that I'm experiencing the promise of God that his time is real. I want you to experience that in your life because this is what God wants for all of us. God's promise works with his time and you need patience to wait 
for that time. Because in the waiting, God is working. And where is God working? He's working in your heart. He's working in your character. Because without the character of God, if you get to that place of greatness, if you get to that place of blessing, you might crack, explode and lose it all. Those things that you long for so much that you acquire, that you are quick to acquire in a way without God's processing can leave you at a time when you need them most. Is it good health? Is it financial blessing? Is it stability? Is it peace of mind? What are the things that you're looking for in your life? Make sure you go through the process of God to look for them. Because anything you get in line with God's process will last. Remember, if you want to build anything that will last, it can never be without process. Once you realize this, you know that no second is wasted because you can never ever be greater than your process. So if you're feeling discouraged today, if you're feeling that you're tired of waiting, if you're feeling tempted to take shortcuts, if you feel that I'm too old, I'm not married, I'm too old, I don't have a child. I'm too old, I've not made it. Don't be tempted to compare yourself to others. Don't be tempted to look around and, and compare yourself to those around you. That's the greatest temptation. God's plan is for you and his timing is perfect for you. If you look at your heart, examine your heart and see that God is working in your heart. And what is he doing? <laughs> the progress of sanctification dying to sin more and more, living to righteousness more and more. This is the mission and vision of our journey here on earth, to be like Jesus. And once you make that your aim, once you make that what you're pursuing, everything else will come at the right time. And let me tell you something, at God's time, everything is beautiful. Don't desire things before the right time comes. Learn patience, learn perseverance, learn endurance because everything in the nature of God requires process. Look at these trees. Spring is coming soon. You don't see the leaves there, but they're coming. Very soon they will usher into beauty and glory in the same way in your life. You might not see the results now of your hard work, of your diligence, of your planting love, of your planting forgiveness, of your planting selflessness, of your planting patience. I want to encourage you that God sees. If you sow to the spirit, heaven is aware. At the right time, they will usher into beauty and glory. That is God's promise for you. Lord Jesus, thank you, Father, for the process that you're doing in our lives. Thank you that your time is perfect. Thank you that your time is right. Give us a hearing heart, a submissive heart, an obedient heart. Create a hunger and thirst for your holiness in our life so that we can submit to your process in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I can't wait to hear your testimony of how the process of God is working in your life. Because once you realize it's all about process, your perspective changes. Instead of complaining, instead of murmuring, instead of worrying, instead of being anxious, you begin to realize that in every step of your life, God is with you. He has a purpose for every stage in your life. And once you know that, hmm, joy comes to your heart because you know that as the, you're in the potter's hands, he's molding you. And that process that you go through to achieve something is more important than whatever the result may be. If you look at your life, you'll see the greatest lessons that you learned were in the hardest times. But that is when your heart was open to the working of the Holy Spirit. And God was molding you, molding you, molding you. See what you've become today. And this is just the beginning. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us here on the University of God. Do not resist the process of God in your life. Thank you.